a golden age. Not far away, a blue police box faded into view on an empty Scottish hillside. After a moment, the door opened, two figures came out, a tall, thin man and an attractive young woman. The man drew in a deep breath of highland air and gazed happily around him. Look at that, he cried out the doctor. Just look at that. Now, is that a view or is that a view? Martha Jones looked. It's certainly an attractive stretch of countryside, not far away. There were pine woods leading down to a river. The sun gleamed on its rushing waters. There were low woodland hills all around, gradually increasing to larger ones in the misty distance. Now that is a view, the doctor said the doctor, answering his own question. What do you say? It's very nice, said Martha. Very nice, said the doctor. Queen Victoria loved this bit of countryside, called it her highland paradise. She came to Balmoral Castle on a visit as a young girl, fell in love with it, brought the place, knocked the castle down, built a bigger one. That's the royals for you. No expense, no objection. He shaded his eyes with his hands, peering into the distance. You can see the castle from here, he frowned, turning slowly around, surveying the countryside. Well, you ought to be able to see it. Perhaps they moved it, decided it was look nicer somewhere else. No, no, they won't do that, said the doctor. Would they? He peered round again, shaking his head. Maybe they would. Can't understand why we can't see it unless we're not where I think I am. He licked his finger and held it up in the air as if that might give him a clue. Norway, suggested Martha. China? No, said the doctor. He inspected his finger. Might be about half a mile out. It can happen when you're crossing the universe. He drew it in a deep breath. Just taste the highland air, can't mistake it. Do I have to wear these clothes, Martha? Looked down at her long skirt and high button boots. She adjusted the labels of her heavy tweed jacket. She tugged at the collar of her high-necked white blouse. I searched the TARS wardrobe to find these clothes, said the doctor. Just what the well-bred young lady wears in the country stroll. Look at me. I'm not complaining. He looked happily down at his hairy tweed suit. It was exactly the same cut as his suit he usually wore. All right for you. A suit's a suit, grumbled Martha. Men's clothes never seem to change. Why are we bothering with these outfits? The doctor sighed. What did you say to me in the TARDIS? I said I wanted a bit of peace and quiet, a touch of gracious living. Somewhere without hostile aliens and nasty monsters. Exactly. I promised you a visit to a golden age. A time of peace, prosperity, and calm. He threw his arms out wide and just missing Martha as he turned in a full circle on the spot. And here we are. Where? No, I suppose I mean when. The very beginning of the 20th century. Early years of the reign of His Majesty King Edward VII. The Boer War is just ending and the First World War is still years away. It's a golden age, but a more formal one. That's why you've got to wear the clothes. So what's the plan? We soak up some healthy highland air and pop down to London to enjoy the high life? I even might get you presented at court. That sounds more like it. Right, said the doctor. Come on. Where? to enjoy a nice bracing stroll through the countryside. We can find the missing castle while we're at it. Captain Henry Carthers laid hidden behind the border of the nearby hillside and wrestled with his conscience. A few hundred yards away, across a shallow valley, was another little hill. On the crest of the hill stood a stag, and not just any old stag, a magnificent old tw twelfth pointer. A shootable stag far Fair game for the hunter, it stood quite still, gazing into the distance. Carthage laid in a classic firing position, his rifle lined up on its target. His firing tightened on the trigger. Touch more pressure and Henry Carthage had a shameful secret. He didn't really like hunting. He was a fine shot. He had seen action in the Boer War and had shot quite a few of the Boer soldiers out in their saddles, but then they were trying to shoot him. 
but killing for sport, shooting at something that couldn't shoot back. Somehow he had no taste for it. In the Edwardian age, such ideas in a young army officer would be, be regarded as a strange indeed. Hunting, shooting, and fishing were a gentleman's natural pursuits. So Henry Carthers kept his secret and played along, missing as often as he decently could. Now he had a problem. He'd been ordered to shoot a stag by the king himself. The perfect stag had appeared, and the orders were orders. He drew in a deep breath and steadied his aim. My heart in the highlands, my heart is not here, he sang, sang the doctor in a surprisingly good Scott accent. My heart is in the highlands a hunting a de the deer. You're not the only one, said Martha. She pointed, clearly visible on the hillside just ahead. A young man was training his rifle on a noble stag, which stood at the crest of a nearby hill. They saw the young man take aim. Oi, shouted Martha. The stag ran. The young man fired and missed. As the stag vanished over the other side of the hill, the young man rose. He came towards them, cradling the rifle in the crook of one, one of his arms. You made me miss my shot said the young man mildly. He didn't seem very annoyed. Yeah, well, I don't approve of bloody the bloody sport, said Martha firmly. The young man was slim and fair, and slight of built. He wasn't much taller than she was herself, but he was, Martha suddenly realized, extremely handsome. He gave her a charming smile. I'm not sure I approve of the blood sport myself, but he was a very old stag, you know. He'll die soon anyway, perhaps in pain. So you were doing him a favor. Martha's tone made it very clear she didn't believe it. No point in worrying about it now, said the doctor quickly. Allow me to introduce Miss Martha Jones, my, my ward. Where she comes from, they have no tradition of stag hunting. There aren't any stags. Tigers, yes. Very touchy tigers. They hate being hunted. The young man bowed. In honor to meet you, Miss Jones. To be honest, I'm not too bothered by missing the stag myself, but I'm afraid you've got me in trouble with my employer. Martha gave him a puzzled look. How come? He sent me out here this morning with orders to shoot a stag. Martha snorted. Who does your boss think he is? Giving orders like that, the King of England. The young man looked at her and smiled. Actually, he does. And as a matter of fact, he is. Martha stared at him. What are you on about? Are you saying you work for the king? I am, and I do. What's more, I think it's your duty to explain to his majesty that you made me miss my shot. My life may depend on it. Martha looked horrified. Are you not, you're not serious, doctor. He's not serious, is he? A very serious matter, disobeying the king, said the doctor, could mean the tower. You're joking. Henry Carthur grinned. He's joking, don't worry. The most the old boy will do is pull my leg about being a rotten shot. The doctor smiled. I'll take it you're based at Belmore. Carthers bowed. Captain Henry Carthers, aide to His Majesty King Edward the Seventh. Dr. John Smith. Carthers turned to Martha. Tell you what, why don't you come back to Belmore for lunch? I'll later introduce you to His Majesty. He m loves meeting new people, especially if they're attractive and female. He gave Martha an admiral, admiring look. You better watch out, Martha, said do the doctor. His Majesty's popular nickname is Edward the Caresser. Henry Carthers laughed. Your ward will be safe enough, sir. At the moment, Lily Lang three, and Miss Kelper are keeping him fully occupied. He turned to Martha. Will you accept? Oh, I don't know, said the doctor. Busy schedule, tour of the Highlands trip to London. We won't want to impose. But Martha felt differently. Oh, come on, doctor, she said. How often do you get a chance to have lunch with the king? After a few more polite protests, they accepted the invitation. Right, come along then, said Carthers. Allow me to lead the way. He set off down the path. They, as they followed, the doctor whispered, Quite often, actually. Quite often, what? Asked Martha. Quite often, I've had lunch with the king. Henry VIII always put on a good spread. James I surprisingly mean. And... For Alfred the Great, the, ven the venison stew was all right, but the cakes were terrible. Shh, said Martha. Not much further, said Carthurs over his shoulder. 
There's a good view of the castle when we get atop the, this next hill. He strode ahead, reaching the top of the hill and froze. No, he gasped. The doctor and Martha hurried to join him below them, where should have been the splendid sight of the Belmore Castle, but it, there wasn't. Instead, there was a vast, oddly shaped area, bare earth, a shallow crater surrounded by garden fountains and paths. The doctor and Martha looked at each other and then, speaking at once, they said one word, Trudun.